In college football, we know exactly which conference is revered as the best. We're going to talk about the SEC, the upcoming schedule this week and week 10 for the SEC, what it means for the SEC leading into the college football playoff, because we're getting closer to that being week 10. We're going to talk about it all here on Rising to the Occasion. Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of Rising to the Occasion. This is Rising in the Red Zone, an all-college football access show where we talk all things college football. And today we're talking SEC. This is a Rising to the Occasion production presented by Herd at Sports. And, uh, you know, let's go ahead and jump into it, man. We've got the SEC in a big-time week. Uh, and uh, first, I guess before we jump into it, got to first uh, bring in my co-host for the evening, Jeremy. How are we doing, man? Doing pretty good, then. Just... It makes me a little bit sad to see that college football has come in and going a lot faster than what we all really wanted to. But we we all know how it goes, Josh. Once you get once you get to watching so many great games, it's just going to go like in the blink of an eye. But I I know, like you mentioned at the top of the hour, that we're going to be talking about the SEC for this upcoming weekend. Then there's some good games that. I think that can maybe be surprising for some people, but all in all, Josh, there's some good matchups that we got upcoming this week. So I'm going to cut the chit chat and let's just get going with it. Yeah, man. Uh, the SEC, we know. I mean, we've always known. It's just, it's been hard for, It's. It, I get it. I, I used to be a Big 12 guy. I'm an Oklahoma fan. I used to be a Big 12 guy. I said, shut up about the SEC. <laughs> but then, you know, you always know that they're one of the toughest conferences. And from top to bottom, this is a conference that's extremely difficult. Uh, you've got teams like Mississippi State, who was playing close with both Texas and Georgia in back-to-back -back weeks. I mean, you've mm -hmm. got, uh, you know, teams like Oklahoma, who was just playing really close and had a lead against Ole Miss here just oh, this past weekend. And then, of course, uh, teams like South Carolina kind of surprising people and, yeah. and doing some things, you know, almost beating – LSU almost beating Alabama, uh, laying a whooping on Oklahoma, but we won't talk about that one. And then, of course, Vanderbilt. <laughs> Vanderbilt that's what was, I was a pretty good say. football team this year. Yeah, Vanderbilt. I mean, that's it, it's such a crazy conference, and it's always deep. But this year just seems like an odd kind of deep. Uh, and then you you talk about a first year head coach with the Texas A and M Aggies, and they are at the top of the standings. I mean, Jeremy, this is this is a year that is just so crazy um, because you have Alabama who beat Georgia, Georgia who beat Texas, Tennessee who also beat Alabama, LSU just lost to Texas A&M, and now you've got all of these teams right up there at the top of the conference with Texas A&M being the only undefeated team in conference play. Uh, it's it's a crazy crazy season, a crazy to think Texas A&M who I I wasn't even high on this year. No, uh, Texas a and at the top right now, though. I mean, you and I both have the same standard. Like we were expecting like to see Georgia, like we're usually seeing at the top of the shelf or Alabama, one of the two. But Texas A&M sitting on top of the leaderboard in the SEC. That was uh, that was anything but what I expected to see coming out of this year. But I mean, it's definitely just been a uh, a crazy, crazy year in the SEC, just in college football in general. Like I just I know this has been longly overdue but i just still can't get my mind wrapped around that vandy beat alabama i mean that that was just i still then, can't believe did you it. see how close they were they lost by Texas three lost by three i they know and mean, you even crazy. mentioned on the episode we did on saturday what do you have to lose for maybe put some cheddar on vandy yeah I, and I, I did i said that and i said you know i don't think they're going to win but I don't know, and, and the reason why the reason why it's it's it just seemed like too obvious of a of a uh, a an underdog story, and so right. I was like, that's not going to be the underdog story uh, that we look at. And I mean, sure enough, it was it was pretty close. <laughs> you know, it was it was really close to being a big time upset. Oh yeah. So uh, really crazy. But let's get go ahead and jump into the SEC this week in week ten. Of course, looking at the at the top rankings, looking at these top teams. Uh, I mean, currently you've got. Uh, teams, you know, you've got Texas A&M, you've got Georgia, you've got Texas and Tennessee, and even LSU that really seem like they've got the best chances to win the conference or to at least play for the conference championship. Uh, let's start off with the Texas A&M Aggies with the rest of their schedule. This week, South Carolina. Now, earlier in the season, I would have said, uh, you know, honestly, early, if you could say preseason, I would have said, I don't really know. These are going to both be dumpster fire teams this year just because I don't think either of them are going to be very good. 
Now you get into week 10. This becomes a pretty big matchup where South Carolina, you know, Texas A&M has to go to Columbia, South Carolina to play this game. So this becomes a little more interesting. Currently, Texas A&M is, is a two and a half point favorite. That's kind of interesting. Um, but then to look forward, Texas A&M also has to play Texas to end the season, which again, one of those top teams that we're talking about here. But let's go ahead and start off with just what's happening this week with Texas A&M uh, having to travel to South Carolina. I mean, this is this is just a very meaningful game for really both of these teams because you talk about South Carolina, they're two and three in the conference. No, not really any big chances for anything big. But I mean, this is a better season being at four and three than they have expected. And really a, a couple of plays away from beating both Alabama and LSU and only being, you know, with, with one loss now with being four and one in the conference, that's how close they are to be, to being up there and playing for a, a conference championship. Uh, and so Texas A&M, they have that one loss against Notre Dame doesn't count anything towards the conference. So, I mean, you went out the conference, you're going to the, the, the college football playoff with a, a first week by just just saying, I mean, Texas A&M, who's looking mighty good, and it seems like they just keep on improving week in, week out. You also have a South Carolina Gamecocks team that believes that they can pull off this upset, Jeremy. Yeah, that's the big thing that is completely mind boggling me. Like you see, like you said, week in and week out. Each week, they just seem to get a little bit better and better and better, and that's that's what you really ultimately want throughout this entire season. You want to see the, these teams like this literally get better each week in and week out. Learn from your mistakes. Make some big plays off of those mistakes and just go on from the next week. I mean, it, you tell me that Texas A&M to be able to win outright in the conference and be able to make the conference playoffs and everything like that, I mean – at first, everyone was a little bit skeptical about the new playoff format and et cetera, et cetera. But in reality, I I know when we first talked about this, we weren't too big of a fan just because we're so used to seeing the college playoffs just the way that they are, just leave everything alone. But in all honestly, I, I'm starting to flip the script a little bit. I'm starting to like this new playoff format just because you do get to see some of these teams get the opportunity to make the make the twelve man playoff format now. Well and and to be fair, we we did say I don't like the twelve team playoff, but when it gets here, we're gonna love it because it means more football. That's true. And it it it's adding so much parody. And you know, we've we've said this in the past, but with NIL and with the transfer portal it really is bringing down the game of college football in so many ways. And we can, we can see that as traditionalists, they, 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 you know, for, for some of us who have been watching college football since, uh, you know, the late 1990s, even, uh, you know, and, and maybe even going back, especially for people who go back even further than that. For me, it's early 2000s is when, you know, I guess for you and I, you know, so it's, we go back that far but for people who go back even further. It's even more, oh man, you're taking away the good old days of back in the 1990s when, uh, you know, with with big powerhouse teams like Nebraska just smash mouth football or Miami with smash mouth football, which we'll, we'll get to Miami whenever we talk about the mm -hmm. ACC later on this week. But uh, and so stay tuned for that. And then uh, but, you know, it's it's adding a lot of parity, which is good for the sport. And, and like you said, I think this 12 team playoff also plays into that because you have a team, you know, I mean, you can you could have possibly three or four teams from either the Big Ten or the sec and that's just that's just crazy to think about uh and so yeah i mean i'm, I'm right there with you and, and like i said we we called this out we said i don't like the 12 team playoff but when it gets here i'm gonna love, love it. it it's it's more meaningful football and these top ranked teams so let's say that texas a&m they they only lose the one game to texas that's the one on their schedule that seems like that's going to be tough to win not saying they right. can't win it and maybe by the time we get there that's who we're picking but if that's their one loss, let's say they don't make it to the uh, college football playoff and then Texas uh, or sorry, the uh, SEC championship mm -hmm. and then Texas ends up losing the SEC championship. Then Texas A&M is a higher ranked, uh, higher ranked in, in the conference than Texas. And let's say that Texas A&M gets in with a with the first first week, not a bye week, but the first week getting to play at their home stadium at Kyle Field. I, I mean, it's, it's just really cool things like this that put in a whole new spin on the college football playoff and the way that it could all fall out. And I'm really excited here. I think we have another week, maybe two weeks. Uh, I'm trying to remember when the college football playoff 
rankings finally drop. I think we've got either one or two, two weeks, weeks left. I think it's two weeks. You might be right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. And, and it's crazier to think that this, this matchup between Texas A&M and South Carolina has such big national implications. Mm -hmm. And the fact that as good as Texas A&M is, that South Carolina is good enough that we're talking about a possible upset. I mean, it's, it's very crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go ahead and go on to another team that doesn't have as high hopes making it to the SEC championship game, but they do need to win out in order to make it to the college football playoff. In my opinion, I don't, I mean, I just, this is not the year for a three, three loss team to make it into the college football playoff the way that everything has yeah. shaped out. Facts. Not the way that everything's shaped out because you've got you've got teams in the Big Twelve that are looking good. You've got uh, you know teams in the ACC that are looking good. You've got uh, some power you know or, uh, sorry some uh, group of five teams that are looking pretty good like Boise for example, yeah. uh, Army and Navy. I mean uh, Navy's pretty much out of it, but Army's still in it. Yeah. So talking about it, Ole Miss they have to win out. In my opinion, I think they have to win out. Now that could change. Maybe there's a lot of chaos. Mm -hmm. So. At this moment in time, though, I think they have to win out, which let me pull up Ole Miss's schedule. This week they play Arkansas, a team that's kind of looking just good enough to keep Sam Pittman around, which is yeah. a, a bittersweet moment for <laughs> Arkansas fans. They're like, yeah. man, we really thought we were going to get rid of him, but he's doing good enough where we can't justify getting rid of him. Yeah. This could be an upset alert as well, where you've got Ole Miss is only a touchdown favorite on the road at, at Arkansas. Really? And they're one of the best teams in the nation. I mean, they were talking about that against the, the game with Oklahoma this past weekend, where when you look at the strength of schedule and who they lost to and how they lost, you know, losing to LSU in overtime, uh, you know, that's a tough loss. And then losing to Kentucky was just, you got it. You had mm -hmm. a trap game and you, you lost one that you shouldn't have. Yeah. So, you know, and looking at the rest of their schedule, you know, playing games like, uh, you know, LSU and Oklahoma, uh, you know, beating South Carolina the, the, way, the way they did in South Carolina, looking as good as they do. Uh, th this is one of the better teams in the nation still, even though that they have the, the two losses on, on their season so far. But they go to Arkansas, where, again, this is just one of those scary games. And you've got, uh, you know, you've got an Arkansas team who's performing really well. Uh, you know, you, you look at how they just now whooped up on Mississippi State. Again, another team that's not looking good uh, as far as the schedule or as, as far as their record is. But your record does not always say how good you are because Mississippi State is making it close with other big teams. Uh, you know, with with Arkansas, though, they they beat Tennessee earlier on in the season. They kept it close to Texas A&M, who is looking really good and ranked number 10 right now. Well, we had a little bit of technical difficulties, but we're back uh, going again. Take two. Uh, but anyways, Jeremy, I mean, what, yeah, what, what I was trying to say though with Arkansas is they're one of those teams that, I mean, they're looking again, another team that's just a couple of games, you know, a couple of plays away from having a really good looking record and in contention. I mean, honestly, with being three and two in the, in the conference, I don't think they're going to do it, but they do, they are in contention for the SEC. As crazy as it sounds with as many, uh, you know, as many things that could go wrong for the teams at the top, they're in that contention. They're on the outside of contention, I should say. They're just on the on the bubble of contention. But Arkansas is not a team that Ole Miss can overlook. And this week they've got to, you know, they've got to play Arkansas. And it's, it's going to be a very interesting uh, game for them. I do think Jackson Dart looks really good all season long, and he looks very good against Oklahoma, even with pressure in his face. It uh, was very shocking to see how good he really was uh, against that kind of pressure. And this, this, this Ole Miss team seems like they keep on piecing together the right things. And, and of course, like I said, they, they have to win out uh, to, to make it to the college football playoff with Georgia still on their schedule, with Florida still on their schedule, and Mississippi State still on their schedule. So this, this is a must-win game, and it's a tough road ahead uh, through the SEC for the Ole Miss. Tough is putting it lightly, to be honest with you, Josh. I mean, <laughs> you talk about just that kind of a slate for the remainder of the schedule. I know specific teams, like you can see, we've talked about it before, they have a tough start at the beginning of the season, then towards the tail end of the season, it gets a little bit easier. But, I mean, for Ole Miss in this situation, it's definitely going to be a real big dog fight. I mean, no, no pun intended going against Georgia, but, I mean, you, you realistically look at that factor. Like you said, you have to win out to be able to get into the situation that you guys want to endure. Um, 
don't get me wrong. Ole Miss has been a really good team, and Jackson Dart, like you mentioned, he's been he's been th- he's been doing really really great and just staying calm, cool, and collective, and know what to do in specific moments, and not just cost your team um, not cost your team a wisely momentum push that could easily get you guys back on the sideline. Then you guys will have to try and redo it after your defense gets on the field, and hopefully they get a good stand going on, but realistically they may be sitting at five and three for the situation. Like you mentioned, you, you don't want to see any of these teams sitting at that, that loss category with three, just because you definitely know you're going to be on the verge of the bubble. It, it anything's basic. I shouldn't say basically, but anything's possible that you can never know with these last couple of weeks remaining of the season, they could be making it in, but that's the, that's the big thing that we can definitely see out of this new format to where you can see a team with three losses in the, in their conference or just the overall season. And they could still potentially make this playoff bracket. But realistically it, a lot of people or a lot of teams, definitely, I should say, you see those kind of teams sitting with a three loss season. They can, maybe get too big of a head and say, okay, they've lost three games. We've only lost one, for example, and you go against them. They could definitely have a high hope rolling into playing against you. And you can all of a sudden either a get molly or B you can completely get surprised. And they're going to put, going to put up a really big dog fight. But Josh Ole Miss is definitely capable of doing it, but in order to do it, like you said, they have to win outright, and it's definitely going to be a really, really tough road for them for the remainder of the season. Yeah, it's a tough road, and it starts in Columbia, South mm-hmm. Carolina, uh, and it's or uh, sorry, uh, we were just in five, and, and so I, I got mixed up. But yeah, in Fayetteville, and, and for for going against Arkansas and going to Razorback Stadium, um, it, it's mixing 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 it up in my brain now. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 crazy because the road ahead isn't easy. And, you know, there's really at least one of those losses that they shouldn't have had, and that being yeah. Kentucky. And then one of those losses that's just tough and you wish you could have it back because a couple of couple of different plays gets you in, into that game to where you, you didn't yeah. lose that one. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy to see all of the things that have to shape up. And, and, and as much football has already been played, we're already into week mm-hmm. 10, there's still so much oh, football yeah. ahead. And there's so much that could flip upside down know. and get a team that you never saw into the college football playoff or even a conference championship game. It's really crazy. But let's go on and go to arguably one of the best teams in the nation still, uh, the Georgia Bulldogs, sitting there at 4-1 and one in the conference because they just got killed in the mm. first quarter against Alabama and then somehow came back and that wasn't enough, uh, you know, losing yeah. that game. Very close game. But Georgia, I mean, they've been dominant all season long. They've still been Georgia. They've still been the same team that we know that they can be and then that we know that they are. Uh, they just, you know, they, they, they had that, that game against Alabama mm-hmm. and slipped up. Uh, and, you know, that's that's one of those games. <laughs> and, and it's tough to play yeah, in Tuscaloosa. Always has been. But Georgia still Georgia still really kind of in, in the driver's seat. They, they hold their own destiny. All they have to do is just keep on winning. Um, but, of course, not an easy road. Again, we talk about uh, this game. They're going to be having the largest cocktail party, uh, having to go against uh, Florida in Jacksonville. That's going to be a really fun game to watch just because Florida is starting to look better. They are. Uh, they're kind of looking like, a, hey, Florida is not a good team, but they might be able to scare Georgia at least. Not Not saying it's an upset alert. I just think it's – a scare yeah. alert, um, but you know they've got to play Florida, who again isn't an easy an easy game no. by any means. And then you've got Ole Miss and Tennessee left on the schedule. Of course, you should, should be able to beat UMass and Georgia Tech just fine. Although Georgia Tech, uh, again, another one of those teams that they can surprise you sometimes, and they can just make things really weird when they shouldn't be. So just throwing out their schedule. Uh, but this week, starting off with. Uh, you know, the largest cocktail party against the Florida Gators in Jacksonville. Going to be a really fun game. Uh, and, and right now sitting at a 79.8% chance to win, according to ESPN's FPI. Uh, they're also a 17-point favorite. That just smells like recipe for a scare. Just throwing that out there. You get your head a little too high, and you get to get a little bit ahead of yourself, and then you get scared a little bit. And uh, you know what? That, that's, that's, that's what could happen here. But... You look at this Georgia team and the way that they've performed. I mean, honestly, to me, if they lean on Trevor Etienne, I don't feel like this is much of a worry for them. But for Georgia, 
and the way that everything could shape up throughout the season. And especially, like I said, looking forward specifically to that Ole Miss game and that Tennessee game back to back at Ole Miss. So you're going to Mm -hmm. Oxford and then you host Tennessee. Those are two games that you can't take lightly. And so you know that a game like today, you know, with, with this week against Florida, you've got to win to keep keep your hopes alive. Yeah, absolutely. Forward. I mean, Carson Beck has just been continuing to do Carson Beck things for Georgia. There's there's no doubt about that. But going back to like you mentioned for Florida, the beginning of the year, like you look at Florida versus Miami, for example, everyone was expecting this to be a complete barn burner of a game for Florida. Then all of a sudden, you see Florida go out there and they get stomped on. I mean, that was definitely a Big surprise for a lot of people, but I mean, you look at, like you said, Florida has um, each week, they've gotten a little bit better. Yes, they may not get the overall outcomes that they want to, but Florida, they are taking steps in the right direction. That's definitely one thing for, to say the least, but you got, you definitely do have to get your mindset right. I know everyone's expectations against Georgia. It's, it's the dogs. What more can you really say? But you said it the best. They can they can still go in there, and they can definitely at least give Georgia an eye opener. That could, to me, that would definitely be like a win situation for Florida. I I obviously know the overall goal for them is to get the W against Georgia, but we all probably know how that's going to happen. But uh, you you can never know until the fat lady sings. I mean anything's possible in these kind of games. I mean, everyone obviously knows what Vandy and Alabama, what happened for them, like Vandy and, and Texas. It was, they didn't come out for what they wanted to for Vandy, but I mean, still it was definitely a big eye opener, but I mean, Florida, they can, they can definitely at least surprise the dogs and they can catch them off guard. That is definitely a big thing. And a lot of other teams can definitely easily see that kind of potential and say, Oh, this Florida team that we, we steamrolled over a couple weeks ago. They're they're definitely surprising Georgia out here, and then who knows what we could pop, we could potentially do. For all we know, we could potentially beat them. But any team can't any team can't realistically look at any of these games easy, just because it's the greatest conference of all time in the SEC. But I mean, yeah, I mean it's it's just a tough conference from absolutely top to bottom, and that's something you can't take any game lightly. I, 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 we just. Yeah, we just had an episode about the Big Ten and talking about the Big Ten. They're kind of that yeah, way this year true. too, and, and they're usually known for being more top heavy. You got Ohio State, Michigan, and then Penn State's one of those contenders, and then mm-hmm. everybody else. You know, that's pretty yeah. much how it is. You really only have two teams that are going to win right. the conference right. in the Big Ten. Where in the SEC, yeah, you've got your your top heavier teams, but those top heavy teams also have to worry about the bottom feeders mm-hmm. like Florida. Uh, you know, and so, yeah, I mean, just looking at Florida, I, I mean, you, you go back throughout their, their, their journey this year too, and just what they've gone through, uh, you know, starting off with the big loss against Miami, something that you, man, you, it just, it kills you to see and, you know, and bouncing back against Sanford, but then getting beat by Texas A&M by double digits. Then you turn around and beat Mississippi state who again, isn't good based on their record, but a decent team. And so that gives you a little bit of confidence and then you beat UCF and then you, hang in there close with Tennessee and then you beat Kentucky. I mean, mean, this is a Florida team that's starting to gain a little bit of confidence and just enough confidence that they know that, Hey, we just now beat Kentucky who was what one point away from beating Georgia just a few weeks ago. So that gives you just enough confidence to go in there and, and play a good game. I'm not saying it's an upset alert. Again, it's just a scare alert. Keep 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 a hold of that because uh, that's going to be a fun game regardless of the rankings. But the last one that we'll talk about because no no games from Alabama or LSU uh, or Texas, the other three top teams in the conference. But we're going to talk about the Tennessee Volunteers before I do. Just a quick note: whoever's making the schedules this this year are doing a really good job of putting a bye week right before a big time game for both teams. We had that for the Georgia. Alabama Mm -hmm. game. We had that for the Oklahoma, Texas game. There was another big one that I remember there being a bye week right before, and I can't think of which one that was, but then you also had have it for this Alabama LSU game coming up next week. So just throwing that out there, pretty cool. Uh, And and kudos to you for making a good schedule, but let's go over to the Tennessee volunteers. Another team that is in the driver's seat. All they have to do is just keep on competing. They've got Kentucky this week at home should be an easy win. That's when you start to get ahead of yourself, though. That's when you start to worry because it should be easy. 
But is, is Kentucky going to play their hearts out? Because Kentucky is known for playing very close and above their weight level against Georgia. We just saw that. We just said that a few weeks ago. Um, you know, but for for Tennessee going forward, you know, you've got Tennessee or sorry, you've got Kentucky and Mississippi State who you should be able to beat. And then, you know, later on in the season, you've got UTEP. Um, but then you've also got Georgia to worry about coming up on your schedule. So you, you really can't afford to lose any of these other games that you mm. should win. And then on the last game of the schedule, you're going to go to Nashville and play Vanderbilt. So just throwing in the, in this schedule, uh, it's a very manageable schedule where even if they lose that one to Georgia, as long as they win these games that they should win, you're looking just fine. And you're talking about college football playoff. If you're a two loss sec team, in Definitely. my opinion. So, uh, you know, Tennessee this week just has to handle business against yeah, UK. That's one thing they definitely have to do is handle business. I mean, I know a lot of people give uh, give Kentucky some backlash just saying, oh, they're a basketball school, blah, 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 blah. But, I mean, Kentucky has definitely came out this year especially, and they've proven a lot of people that they're meaning business and they're not just a basketball school. Like like you just said it twice. I'm going to make it a third time. Look at what they did against Georgia. I mean – if, if you can go on a poll and ask 100 people and say, would you believe if I said Kentucky's being Georgia right now in college football, I guarantee you 99%, probably 100% will tell you you're lying. But, I mean, you can't take any game lightly. I mean, you look at your schedule, like you said, with having Kentucky, the Mississippi State, Georgia, Utah, Vandy. I mean, you can't take any of these guys lightly. I, I understand, but – um, it's definitely going to be a real, real big slate for the Tennessee Volunteers here just because this can definitely make or break your season just because if you get that one loss, like I understand you'll get to two, like you still have really good potential, but then you get to possibly losing a third game if they do, then that's going to be a real, real big head scratch just because anything's possible in these last couple weeks for – going on for getting ready for college football but like even looking on Kentucky's side like obviously for this week having Tennessee then next week against Murray State then going against the Longhorns then going against Louisville at the end of the year I mean both of these teams they they could definitely be in the same kind of driver's seat just for potentially winning three games and losing one or splitting and losing two and two you can definitely well and and for for Kentucky too, to, I mean, because you brought that up. For Kentucky, they're fighting for three more wins just Absolutely. to make a bowl game. Uh, I, I mean, so I mean, you, you've got to win. You've got Tennessee, Murray State, uh, Texas, and Louisville. Murray State's the only one that you can mark down as a win. Uh, you know, and and you should be able to win yeah. that one just fine. And nobody's nobody's going to call upset alert there yeah. against Murray State, who is currently one. Hey, they <laughs> so, got one. It's 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 something. Yeah, I mean, it it, it can happen, sure, but it, nobody's yeah, going to call yeah. upset alert on there. Uh, so outside of that one game, you're looking at four wins. Where's where's your other two? Are you going to beat Texas? Are you going to be even Louisville? Looks better than Kentucky yeah. this year. So I mean, who, who are, who's your two wins? Uh, it, you know, or really yeah. three wins. Uh, so who's your two other outside of that Murray State game for for Kentucky? I mean, that's why Tennessee has to be careful because Kentucky doesn't have anything to lose. They have everything to gain by yeah, winning this game. Absolutely. So you know you've 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 got to keep keep your head on a swivel. And these are the kinds of games when you come in here as a sixteen and a half point favorite, which is what Tennessee is, uh, you know, at home too. So I mean, that's just a little more confidence yeah. for them. When you come in here as a sixteen and a half point favorite, that's when you start to get a little bit comfortable. And did, did you see the video, the uh, of the unveiling of Tennessee's all black? No, I'm not. No, I'm have to go look it up. I. I you know, maybe I'll try to edit okay. that in right here, but you, it's, they it's clean. amazing. I'll, I'll send okay. it to you here. Ooh, the, yeah, and then, and then they even did the little venom Ooh. crawling up on the uniform and spreading across the uniform. It was a sweet video. Uh, I'm pretty awesome. That up now. Anyways, yeah, I mean, just wait, wait to drop that out and uh, let you, let everybody know that hey, guess what? We got some of the coolest, baddest uniforms. It's it's funny. I hate orange. But I like Tennessee orange. I really do because, uh, you know, that burnt orange, mm -hmm. don't like it and don't like it. You know, Oklahoma State orange is pretty close, but it's not right. quite the same. I like the light orange. And, and you know, I, I, it's not even just rivalry. It, it, I mean, that's probably a part of it. It might be psychological. Rivalry kind of plays into it. Mm. Um, but for the most part, I just I just don't really like orange. I'm just not yeah. a fan of it. Um, but I really like, you know, especially that that black and orange. Anyways, Tennessee 
has has a, a a game that they've got to pay attention to because the, these are the kinds of games that you get a little too complacent and you walk in there and you lose a game just because you weren't mm-hmm. paying attention. So got to be careful, but ultimately uh, you also have to to manage your schedule coming up. Um, so that's that's a big thing for yeah. Tennessee. And you know, Nico Yamaliava really hasn't played very well yes. this season. And, and that's something that's been sh- kind of shocking. The Heisman uh, candidate at the beginning preseason. So it's something. Is is he going to finally break out of that shell against the Kentucky defense, who does have a, a a they're they're known for having that that front seven be able to come up back, up back in there and disrupt uh, Nico uh, just a little bit. And so it's going to be interesting to say the least here this upcoming hundred percent. But uh, yeah, I mean going forward, SEC, it's going to be interesting to see because there's so many teams that you could say deserve right now deserve a spot like i said i mean you're talking about texas a&m georgia texas uh tennessee lsu alabama i mean those are all teams even even the red rebels uh you know you talk about ole miss these are all teams that deserve at this point in the season deserve a spot in that college football playoff but who's going to close it out who's going to inch their way closer and who's going, going to engrave their spot into the college football playoff this is an amazing season. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and why not subscribe? If you would like to see more from us, you can check out the channel. You can go over to rising2.com. That's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O.com to find everything that we do. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, X, formerly known as Twitter, all that fun stuff. And if you want to listen on Apple Podcast, head over there and subscribe, follow over there. And you can also give us a five-star review. That's the best way to help us. We appreciate all the love, all the support. We'll catch you next time.